Okay, you've got person one who is consuming 2,000 calories per day and they're expending 2,000 calories per day. And then you have another person who is consuming 3,000 calories per day and expending 3,000 calories per day. At surface level, you'd look at that and you'd say, their weight is going to stay the same. They are both at maintenance, right? Wrong. You see, the person that is eating more and exercising more will actually end up losing more weight than the person that is eating less and exercising less, even though on paper and at surface level, they're eating the same at maintenance calories. It's because of something called G-flux or energy flux, which is literally just calorie turnover. The act of turning over energy creates some energy or requires energy. The demand of that energy fluctuation can dictate a lot of things in the body, especially when you get down to resting metabolic rate. So we're gonna look at the data, because this is very intriguing. It might be a way that you can break through a plateau, it might be a way that you can start kind of repairing a damaged metabolism a little bit more, or maybe it's just more fun, maybe it's just a new way for you to lose weight and do something different, eat more and move more. Because from a standpoint of how we have evolved over the last couple of hundred years, it's very evident to see that we're designed to be moving a lot and ultimately consuming a fair bit. I think as a whole, the amount that we are eating in terms of like our dieting is just getting less and less and less and we're crash dieting and eating so little calories that we're doing irreversible metabolic damage. Anyhow, let's take a look at the first body of research. So before we dive into this first body of research, I will tell you that our goal is to be at energy balance at a higher caloric level, okay? That is going to be a goal for the metabolism. Balance, but at a higher caloric intake, not super, super high. We don't want so much overall burn that we are affecting our body with reactive oxygen species and all that complicated stuff, but we do wanna eat more and burn more. So there was a study that was published in the Annals of Internal Medicine. It was a three month long study and it took a look indirectly at G-flux, which was pretty interesting. So this particular study, they divided people into four different groups. A diet-induced weight loss group. Okay, this group would only restrict calories. There was no real change in exercise, they would just restrict calories. It was diet-induced weight loss. The next group was exercise-induced weight loss, which means that they had them do more exercise. They didn't necessarily change their diet, but they had them do more exercise to put them in a deficit. Okay. The third group was an interesting one because it was a higher flux group. It was a group where they said, we're going to have you exercise more, but we're going to have you eat more to be at maintenance. So you're gonna be at equal, you're gonna be at equilibrium, you're gonna be at maintenance, but we're gonna have you exercise more and you're gonna eat more to compensate. And then the fourth group was just a control group. Well, the results were super cool, okay? Because the weight loss groups clearly saw weight loss and fat loss. They were weight loss groups, they were put in a serious deficit, of course, they're going to lose some weight and lose some fat. But the interesting thing was the movement group, the group where they had more calories in and more exercise. They ended up having phenomenal results too. What they would have them do is they'd have them do 60 minutes of exercise per day without caloric restriction, okay? They ended up losing weight without even restricting calories. Okay, they lost a significant amount of weight. They lost about 16 pounds, about 13.4 pounds of that was fat, around four pounds of it was abdominal fat, and about 2.2 pounds was visceral fat. And mind you, they never went into a deficit. They simply increased how much they ate and increased their exercise to match it. So what is responsible for the increase in overall weight loss? It's that G-flux, it's the fact that being a machine that is moving more and consuming more takes energy in and of itself and has greater metabolic demand. If you wanna get down to the nitty gritty of it with this, over the course of three months, there was an increase in the basal metabolic rate of the group that had the high flux that moved more and ate more of 376 calories per day. So their metabolism increased. They would burn 376 calories more per day. Compare that to the diet-induced weight loss group, they had a reduction of 211 calories per day burned, and the exercise-only weight loss group had a reduction of 126 calories per day. So increase of 376 versus decrease of 211. Uh, yeah, that's like over a 500 calorie delta 
just by eating more and exercising more. But that study didn't look at actual flux, that looked at flux as sort of a byproduct. Now we have a study that takes a look at actual flux itself. It's very intriguing. So we're gonna to get to that in a second because that really explains a lot of what's going on. But I'll tell you, if you're watching this far into the video, it doesn't mean that you just go and eat a bunch of garbage because what you do eat matters. So it's fun and dandy to be able to eat more food and consume more calories, but you still do it right. So there is a link down below for today's video sponsor, which is Thrive Market. Okay, they are an online membership-based grocery store. Super cool, super convenient. You go online, you can select by different kind of diet types. So if you're doing keto or if you're doing paleo or maybe you're vegan or maybe you're trying something new or maybe you're doing autoimmune paleo or something like that, you can select what kind of diet you're doing and it organizes all the foods by category. And then you could sub-filter within that. Say you want baked goods or say you want snacks or say you want sustainable meat and seafood options, things like that, all within given categories. It's super, super cool and it makes it easy and it makes it fun. But the best thing is everything that is on their shelves or digital shelves, so to speak, has that Thomas Delauer stamp of approval on them. That's why they've been a sponsor on this video for so many years because I stand behind the foods that they have on their site and what you can order. So there's a special link down below that will save you 25% off your initial grocery order with Thrive. Okay, so you'll save 25% off plus get a free gift if you use that link down below. So if you wanted to experiment with some new higher calorie foods or just wanna add more food in general, make sure you check them out down below in the description. So this study that was published in the journal Clinical Nutrition, ESPEN, was conducted by lead researcher Dr. Chris Melby, who's very well renowned and very highly respected in this world. Okay, this was a small study, took a look at six obese individuals, but it was looking specifically at G-Flex. So they had them lose weight, 7% of their total body weight, over a course of a few months. They wanted to do this to sort of replicate, for lack of a better term, the metabolic damage that would happen when you lose weight. Then for a few weeks, they had them stabilize. So they lost weight, then they had them stabilize so there wasn't just like a rebound. Okay, after they stabilized, they divided them into two groups. One group was a sedentary group that just reduced calories but didn't really exercise. They were limited to less than 3,000 steps per day, so they just ate less. The other group did the opposite. They had them exercise more. Okay, they did like you know 60% VO2 max for X amount of time until they hit 500 calories expended. So they had them expend 500 extra calories and compensate from those calories with extra food. So they ate more and exercised more. Well, they did this for a few days and after four days, there was a huge difference between the two groups in their resting metabolic rate after just four days. Okay, the higher flux group, the group that ate more and exercised more but was still at maintenance, their basal metabolic rate was at 1,927. Compare that to the other group, they were at 1,847. That's after just four days and you're creeping up on 80 calorie difference of the resting metabolic rate. That is huge and it demonstrates very clearly that we have something working outside of just the mathematical calories in, calories out that we see on paper. There's another piece, another added layer of complexity. Then it gets really interesting because there was a study published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition that took a look at low energy flux and high energy flux in adolescents. They found, get this, low energy flux, not excess calories, was a better predictor of future weight gain. Those that had a lower energy flux, people that exercised little and ate little, were more likely to gain weight later on than those that had a higher energy flux. So those that were able to eat more and moved more, they were shown more to prevent weight gain going forward. So it may be that this whole energy flux movement thing is even more powerful than the almighty reduce calories or increase calories. It's the relationship between the calories and the movement. Now the mechanisms, this is what's highly debated. The mechanisms we don't necessarily know everything about because when you're moving more, you have all kinds of different things happening. You have an increase in insulin sensitivity, you have increases in uh, nutrient partitioning, all kinds of different things that A, take energy, but B, can repair the body better and potentially build more muscle, all kinds of things. So when you have higher output, you're going to have more metabolic drive. And that increase in the flux, as we've been talking about, can also increase what is called the sympathetic nervous system activity. Sympathetic nervous system activity is simply going to be sort of like in the background running, keeping things running a little bit hotter. Okay, so when you have an increase, it's like you have more adrenaline, more epinephrine running, which can make you burn more at rest. 
But additionally, specifically with like adrenaline, epinephrine, and that whole sympathetic nervous system, you have more activation of the beta adrenergic receptors, which explains why there's so much specific fat loss that occurs with high flux dieting. So you get this increase in fatty acid utilization because of the beta adrenergic activity or receptor sort of activity. But then when you look at visceral fat specifically, it was interesting that one study saw a 2.2 pound reduction in visceral fat because that is heavily tied with beta adrenergic receptor activity. So when you have this increase in the sympathetic nervous system simply from being a unit that is moving more, consuming more, yet moving more, there's just more chaos going on in the body which takes energy in and of itself. So at the end of the day, if you're trying to repair a metabolism, you're trying to reboot, start incrementally adding in calories, but make sure that you're also adding in activity to match it. It's gonna be a more fun lifestyle because you get to eat more, but it's also gonna be a more active lifestyle. So you have to take that as well. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.